Gonna have to fix the offensive line in the offseason, man. That's that, that's just the, uh, the that, that it just comes down to that. Welcome to the Jungle Bengals fans, I'm Kyle Phelps and pain, just pain, that's the only word I have to describe it. But hey man, this was still the most exciting season I've ever seen from the Bengals. I've been a fan for my entire life and I'm going to be 30 in May, so you know, I got that. Uh, losing the Super Bowl, it's a painful experience, but at the end of the day, there's still a ton of positive things to take away from this game. Before we get into that, I'd just like to ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It really helps my channel out, and it helps you to be the first to know when we put out all of our awesome content. We're now officially in the off-season, so previews, recaps, all that's obviously over until August because there's no games to talk about. But you won't want to miss the Battle of Ohio podcast clips that we put out twice a week and all of the off-season content that we will be pumping out. So, <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> Honestly, it's really hard to describe the feeling of coming that close and falling just short. But I will say, watching them go from 6-25-1 the past two seasons to the Super Bowl this year is still pretty freaking insane. And hey, seeing Andrew Whitworth get a ring and potentially vault himself into serious Hall of Fame consideration is still really cool, you know? Still, man, though, the, the fact that the Bengals battled back from 13-3 to to take the lead, only to let the Rams battle back and take the lead with 125 left in the game, it... It felt like Joe Montana in Super Bowl 23 all over again. Once again, the Bengals got off to an ultra slow start. Those things are really starting to get obnoxious, man. Joe Burrow even talked about it as something that they cannot afford to do in this game. Despite it being something that they've done all year, this is basically this team's identity. So, you know, on top of all of that, Joe Burrow didn't exactly have his most accurate game either. So we basically handed the ball right back to the Rams with a short field. And of course, after that, they score their first touchdown of the game, and it it just gets off to a little bit of a bad start at that point. Like, what happened next for the Bengals, where Joe Burrow threw a 46-yard bomb to Jamar Chase after a big run by Joe Mixon, and then just, you know, red zone offense just not been the Bengals' strength this year, man. They got a tip pass, they got a drop by Mixon, T. Higgins dropped a touchdown in the end zone, and that just killed all the momentum. Although I will say in T. Higgins' defense, he did make up for it on their next possession after that. The Rams got a touchdown of their own after T. Higgins had that drop. Although they screwed up the extra point attempt, then the defense looked like it was about to break, letting the Rams march right back down the field after you get that momentum. But then, you know, that dude, Jesse Bates, he was like, bruh, pay me right now. And they got an interception on Matt Stafford in the end zone and... You know, then after that, nothing particularly special happened between then and halftime other than there was there was an illegal celebration flag that, you know, was annoying, but it also didn't really make much of a difference because the offense didn't really do anything with it. So we went into the half only down 13 to 10. And I got to say, after being down 13 to 3 and staring 20 to 10 right in the face before the two-minute warning, you have to take that, especially with the Bengals receiving the second half kickoff. I've seen this movie too many times to lose confidence in the Bengals now. And by the way, I know this isn't football related, but can we real quick talk about that halftime show? You know, some people are talking about it as potentially one of the best, if not the best, halftime show of all time. Personally, it was my favorite, but I'm also, you know, a huge Eminem and a Kendrick Lamar fan, and I usually don't care for the super poppy acts that they play at halftime most of the time. So at the moment, I can't really objectively say whether it was the best or not. I can just say that it was my favorite. So why don't you guys let me know what you think about the halftime show in the comments. But anyway, like I said, that's not football related, so we're going to move on. The Bengals came out at the half and they did that thing that they're so good at doing again. You know, where they seize all the momentum in the game by coming out of the half and immediately having a huge deep touchdown play. Yeah, this time it wasn't Jamar Chase, though. It was T. Higgins uh, with a 75-yard grab on his very first play after the half. Then, wouldn't you know it, 
They doubled down on that momentum when Cheeto Awuzie picked off Matt Stafford again in Rams territory. The offense got some momentum going with the ensuing possession, but, you know, Joe Burrow got sacked two more times, and that set the Bengals up to need Evan McPherson to convert the field goal. Neither offense could generate much until the Rams' final drive of the game. And I will say, I've never been one to blame the referees for a loss, but it's like, how do you go the whole damn game? Letting both teams basically play and not really calling much of anything on both sides, by the way. I'm not saying that, you know, it was, you know, skewed one way or the other. But the refs basically let them play the whole game. When the only other flags this game were, you know, that weird illegal celebration penalty and then the delay of game. And other than that, they've just been letting them play all game. And I, I don't know. I don't know. The thing is, I don't want to blame the refs for the loss, but I just don't understand how all of a sudden we're calling penalties the most crucial point in the game when they barely called anything all game. But, you know, still at the same time, the refs didn't let the Rams drive 80 yards down the field on the most crucial drive of the entire game. The refs didn't drop that touchdown. The refs didn't force the ball into triple coverage uh, or massively overthrow Chris Evans. That was all the Bengals. So, I mean, we genuinely cannot lose sight of that fact. All right, so we've got 125 left in the game, two timeouts left. I still believe that Joe Burrow can make this happen. I've seen it happen too many times before. First play of the drive, 17-yard catch to Jamar Chase. Second play, 9-yard catch by Tyler Boyd. You're getting excited. You're like, oh, man, this is they're going to do it. They're going to do it. They're at least going to get in the field goal range, and we're at least going to go into overtime. So now it's fourth and one. This is basically it. But predictably, Aaron Donald gets in the backfield almost immediately. Quentin Spain never had a chance at him. Joe Burrow almost makes an incredible pass to Samaj P. Ryan for the first down, who's waving his arms and like, hey, dude, if you need a, if you need somebody, I've got a little bit of an opening here. And, you know, unfortunately, as you should probably expect, Samaj P. Ryan's not that good of a player, and he could not make the reception. And the other really kind of sad part is, like, Jamar Chase had Jalen Ramsey completely destroyed on that play, and he could have gotten a big giant catch for a touchdown that would have been the most amazing Super Bowl not necessarily a walk-off but Super Bowl winning play in possibly Super Bowl history definitely for Bengals fans obviously because it would have been the only one we would have ever won but Joe Burrow wasn't able to actually get the ball off because he was under way too much pressure and you know it, it, it just gonna have to fix the offensive line in the offseason man that's that, that's just the uh the, that that it just comes down to that. So that's pretty much all I got in this one, guys. Thank you so much for the amazing year that you all have helped give to me. I started building this channel on a whim to do like a play-by-play -play and reaction to the Bengals Jets game a couple of months ago, and that game did not turn out well, but it was the beginning of something that has, you know, grown so far. And it's a very it's still a very small channel. I only have 63 subscribers. But those 63 subscribers feel like 63,000 to me right now. And maybe one day they will be. Until then, I always look forward to more comments like this one from Majestic YT who said on my Bengals Chiefs AFC Championship recap video, I called it way before the playoffs. I knew y'all would make the Super Bowl. Love that team, man. Y'all got more potential than a lot of teams in the league right now. Now go win that Super Bowl. And that's exactly why I'm not completely devastated by this loss, you know? I mean, I am, I, it's, it's a very depressing day, you know, the day after a Super Bowl loss. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie about that. But for the first time in my entire life, we've got literally everything right in front of us. There's no reason to be discouraged about the future. I can expect the Cincinnati Bengals to win a Super Bowl sometime in the next few years, and nobody is going to objectively call me crazy for saying that. But like I said, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You can always find more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash ThePhelps, The Battle of Ohio podcast, which is available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to check out my Bengals coverage at ATBNetwork.com slash Cincinnati Bengals. And right here, if you subscribe. But it's been a hell of a ride, guys, and I cannot wait to see what happens next year for this channel or for the Cincinnati Bengals. So as always, I'll leave y'all with a hootie!